I'm coming to you from the Paradise Rock Club, and I'm here with Scott and Dave from the Rival Sons. Guys, welcome. Thank you for having us. So the Great Western Valkyrie comes out about a year ago, and you guys hit the road. I mean, sold out show at Brighton Music Hall up the road. You tour the States, you go to Europe, you come back. When was the last time you saw your own bed? We came home from like a seven week run, landed for four days and got right back out. And we're kind of doing the same thing again. We're going out for a couple weeks and then landing for a few days, then back out again. Gotcha. And how many times per run does the band break up? Um, surprisingly, we don't officially break up ever. <laughs> But uh, I, I, you know, I think everybody thinks about going home after you know being out eight weeks, nine weeks solid. You just end up feeling like I'm ready to like not. I think I'm ready to sell cars or something. <laughs> then we go home for three days, and on the third day, we're like, God, get me back on the road. Yep. This evening's actually a really huge night for you guys. Yahoo's here. They're going to be streaming the show live. Millions of people watching. Is there any additional nerves when you know that every mistake you make is going to be amplified across the internet? Well, I don't make any mistakes. So. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, we're not worried. I think it was cool. We, we're, our bus is uh, uh, right on the other side of this camera here, as is the giant camera truck. So it was really cool to roll up today and see this huge truck and crew working. I'm more just kind of excited about it. I think it's cool. <laughs> So let's take a step back, back to the beginning. How is it that a couple of guys from California are now playing in front of millions and millions of people? One fan at a time, brother. For this band, it started really with the following in Europe, as I'm sure you know. Uh, our label's based in, in, uh, in the UK, in Nottingham. So uh, a lot of the press cling to us there, and, and it's just nonstop blood and sweat and dirty work under our nails man a lot of guys in the band were actively involved in the scene back in california as you guys were sort of cutting your teeth how did those successes and failures kind of shape uh, what you've become today it's all a learning process as you're going along definitely being out and playing around the world is different than playing in little clubs at home um, but you have to have that foundation you know know what you're doing <laughs> i think it's a, a michael jordan thing and people attribute it with with uh, uh, tiger woods as well this ten thousand hour thing right Anything, anybody who's really succeeding at what they do, if you really look at it, they put 10,000 hours in. So this is how it shapes, you know what I mean? You put all that time in, that's the only way you win, you know? The failures are uh, what really shape you, I think, more than the wins, you know what I mean? Was there any one of those failures where you thought, you know what, I'm going to go back and be a car salesman, like you said, this just isn't <laughs> worth it? For the record, I really don't want to sell cars, but... Um, <laughs> um, off the top of my head, I don't have one that sticks out. I think it's just an amalgamation of, um, you know, like I've had, I've had other record deals that seem like they should have done really, really well. You know, get signed to a, a major label deal for two and a half million dollars. You're thinking, that's it. I'm going to be famous and rich now, only to find a couple years later that I've just spent a lot of money and nobody knows who the hell I am and I got to redo this thing again. Specifically for me, that was something that was a, a great eye opener because it, it taught me about taking money and, and as opposed from earning money, you know. Everybody wants to get the, the big money record deal, but um, I came up with this analogy that I call digging the well. I don't want anyone's free water. I want my water. And when I'm thirsty, I'll go to my well that I dug. So <clears throat> that money that the record label wants to give you, that's on a terrible loan that you're never gonna pay back, that makes you sell your soul, I learned that I'm not going to do that. I don't want their water. I'll go thirsty or I'll dig my own well. And when I'm thirsty, I'll go get that water, which means I'll work. And that's what this band does. We've, yeah. we've recouped on all of our records. We own all of our records. And when we need money, we go work for it. <laughs> so that sort of, I mean, one of my questions is going to be how you approach the business side of things. And it sounds like everybody's very hands-on when it comes to the business of the rival sons. Would you say that's accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would strongly advise every uh, young band out there today to be that way. We've seen the story a million times now, you know. Don't let it be that ridiculous repeat where you just get taken. That's what I tell all the younger bands that tour with us. They ask me for advice. I tell them, don't sell your publishing. Don't sell your publishing because they'll trick you out of that. That's the way we make money, you know, and uh, uh, keep your head in the game because if you don't, there's only one thing that's going to happen. They're going to take you. That's their job to rob you, <laughs> to get more than you, you know. And so as far as the state of the music industry now, 
and you guys have been doing it for quite some time now. How do you think things are now compared to when you were first coming up or even maybe when you were kids looking up to bands? Oh, certainly it was different when we were kids. Um, you know, if you go some generations back anyway, with, with the record business, I think we'd probably be doing this from our yacht. <laughs> right. I'd be flying you in on a helicopter. It'd be ridiculous. I mean, the money was just flowing, and there was people were selling lots and lots and lots of records, and they were doing this old school thing called development deals with bands, which doesn't even exist anymore. But it allowed bands to become good inside the machine instead of come in with four billion likes or something before a label even wants to start beginning to rob them. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> um, I'm not really bitter. I'm just, I'm just a realist, honestly. I'm just a realist. I like, I'm fine with the business. You just got to know how to be inside of it and, and do it. And there's a lot of shady people. But, yeah, I think the, um, it, it's changed immensely. There was a lot more money and people bought records. That's the bottom line. And I, I stream music. I, um, I'm sure I've stolen a lot of records, too. We burn records for each other. And we do. This is what happens, you know what I mean? You don't even think about it, you just start doing it. You burn records, and this is really like, ended up crippling the industry, you know what I mean? Speaking of the old regime, and speaking of the crazy people that are in our business, uh, Gene Simmons recently said that he thinks rock and roll is dead. You just hit the nail on the head, crazy king. <laughs> king crazy. <laughs> well, didn't you guys play one of his parties at some point? Yeah, he, he owes us some money, too. Speaking of people, speaking of bitterness <laughs> and getting ripped off, Gene Simmons, you owe me like $10,000. I almost died playing your show in Texas. This is for you. <laughs> Give me some money, man. <laughs> I, I heard in an interview recently that he said rock and roll is dead. You know, no offense to Kiss fans, but if you spent your whole career dressing up like a clown to get somebody's attention, uh, it doesn't surprise me that he would say something to get more attention. So I just I don't even consider it as, as anything. I think, it's just, I think it's just a blanket, stupid statement. <laughs> rock and roll is alive and well. We see it every day. We see fans freaking out every day over rock and roll. So, Again, I don't think he meant it as, as everyone's taking it. But I really, I filed it away in Who Cares. Yeah. I put it in the Who Cares file, sure. the Gene Simmons comment. So to go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off while we're trashing my childhood heroes, <clears throat> <laughs> Sammy Hagar, is he a cool guy at least? Sammy yeah. is the coolest. Sammy is the coolest. The coolest guy ever. Uh, we've done some several different tours with him, and he is exactly what you think. He's going up there in shorts and flip-flops. Yeah, he's not having a bad day. He's, he, no. Dude, he's bringing it every night, the whole night. He's having the best time. He comes over to our dressing room with his uh, beach bar rum on a waiting tray with drinks already made, and he's serving them up to us. And it's a party backstage with them. They're having a great time. Sammy's an amazing guy. It seems to me that since you guys have been doing this, critics have generally been pretty positive. It seems to me that they really kind of dig what you're doing. I don't care if it's a heavy metal critic or sort of like an old school rock and roll kind of critic. How much, how much stock do you put in that, what people are writing about you? We, we've gotten a lot of good accolades. I, I think um, that's lucky. We're happy. It's good to be appreciated. It's, it's kind of cooler from the fans, but the, a lot of the media, like people like you guys, will guide the fans into it. So it's a great blessing. It's, it's interesting, too, because rock and roll fans, heavy metal fans, hard rock fans, etc., are all very, very stubborn and very, very opinionated. Right. And it's really cool how you guys have sort of bridged that gap, so to speak. We write music that we like, so obviously we're going to have, our influences are going to span all over the music. It's going to be different from all of us, from each guy. I'm definitely trying to infuse, like, some psychedelic, some garage into Jay's more folk bluesier side, and Dave's um, contemporary side, into Miley's more jazzy side, or whatever like that, you know what I mean? We're all gonna reflect a side like that to some degree, and hopefully we're all getting a point kind of in the mix and it's making something uh, individual and unique. Sure. How would you describe your writing style? Uh, is it something you can, you can knock out a record on a bus, or do you all kind of need to be in your own space, bring your own ideas together? First, come check it out. This is where we're uh, tracking everything. We'll all do little bits of writing at home. Um, I'll usually try to come with like a good, good pack of ideas, but I haven't shared them with anybody. Jay will usually do the same thing. On this last record, Dave had some ideas put together, definitely. And then we, we just um, get in the room. Everything is mic'd up and ready. We've got the sounds for the recording, and we write on the spot. We play all of our stuff directly onto this. And then this talks to this over here, this thing. 
but everything is actually mixed down into these little boxes on the side. It's secret weapons. And we can't talk too much about it. So we'll literally go, okay, first song, and I'll throw a riff out, and then we'll just take it from there. And then inside of a couple hours, we'll usually finish the track. Sure. It's bizarre, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not many people do it this way, but we've done it this way on all the records, and it's worked out for us. And like I said, no joke, it is like being backed into a corner with a sharp stick to where you're like, you have to just react. You're not uh, premeditating. You're tracking, you're not premeditating your parts, you're literally putting out something that's instinctual. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like if I threw something at you right now, you just throw up and try to catch it. This is what's happening in the studio. It makes it really uh, a lot more interesting for us. So 2015, what do we have to look forward to from the Rival Sons? Right now, we have uh, we have some big touring things on deck. Older acts we're gonna go out with, I don't think I'm allowed to announce right now. But think, awesomest tour you could ever want to go on. Super cool, all over the world, that's coming up. And that probably means nothing to anybody here. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, we have, we, have, we, have some, we have some big tours lined up, um, some support gigs. We'll continue to do uh, headline stuff. We want to get in and make a record before the end of this year. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Scott, Dave, appreciate it. And have an amazing show this evening. Just try to forget that there are millions and millions of people watching. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> and for those in the house. Yeah, awesome. And for uh, those of you at home, head on over to rivalsons.com for all the latest. I highly suggest it. No matter what genre of hard rock, heavy metal, etc., check them out. Guys, back to you.